do 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 totally not pretending to do this right now oh 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 hi hi there um so yeah uh, i totally didn't just uh pretend like i was working on my wheel so that we could start this video there all right that might be a little bit better so you need to replace the bearings in your profile or madeira hub but you don't know where to start Let's make a video about that. Still not quite there yet. Okay, well, in this video I'm gonna be talking about how you replace the bearings as well as remove the axle, replace the driver, all these different things you can do just from this video. So I'm gonna get the camera in a better place finally and we'll get right into it. Okay, finally an angle we can work with. So the first step to replacing the bearings in your profile or Madeira hub is getting rid of everything as far as axle nuts and hardware goes, pegs, hub guards, all of that stuff, everything except for the jam nuts. And then once you get all of that done, you're going to take the jam nut off from the driver side. The side that has your driver on it, you wanna take this jam nut off, leave the other side jam nut on because we're gonna need that one on. Sometimes they're a pain in the butt to get off. Okay, so once you get the drive side jam nut off and you leave the non-drive side jam nut on, you take out your driver and you're most likely gonna wanna do this with the hub upside down because if you don't, you'll pull out the paws and springs and then you have to collect them and it becomes a pain in the butt. So we're just gonna let the driver drop off the hub, make sure all the paws and springs are there Everything looks good to me. So we can set that aside. Now, you're not done yet because most likely there's a little spacer inside your hub. You're gonna wanna take that one out too. Make note of the direction that it's facing. There's a little lip on it and you always want that lip facing the inside of the hub. Set that aside as well. And now you're ready to take the axle out. And the way you do that, quite literally stated on their website, is if you don't have a press or anything like that, you use a rubber mallet and you hit the axle. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit the axle with the rubber mallet on the drive side with the non-drive side facing down, keeping in mind that when you hit this and the axle comes out, it's going to come out the non-drive side. So you wanna make sure you got something soft there for it to hit or you can catch it. So it's pretty simple, we'll do that right now. It doesn't take a whole lot to get it out. Okay, so once you get the axle out, the first bearing that comes out, comes out with the axle, but if you look inside of our driver area on the hub, there's another bearing that needs to come out. So in order to get that bearing out, we need to take this bearing off of our axle, which we have to do anyways. So we take off our other jam nut, pop off the cone and pop off the bearing. Sometimes it can be a pain. You might have to use a little bit more force, but normally it should just pop off like that. Pretty simple. We can set these aside. And what we do from here is flip the wheel over, put the axle back into the hub the correct way. We wanna make sure that the axle goes all the way into the bearing and seats in there properly so we're not messing up anything or bending anything. And then from there, we're going to hammer it out the exact same way that we did the other side. Keeping in mind that the axle is probably gonna come through the hub and you're gonna to need to catch it or make sure that it lands on something soft so that it doesn't hurt your threads or hurt your axle. So we're gonna hammer that out now. This bearing does not want to come out. All right, well, clearly it's not gonna come out this way, so I'm gonna to have to get a couple blocks of wood and really hammer on it. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna to wanna to be sure of 
when we're doing this is that the blocks of wood are going against the hub itself, that outer race that sticks out and not the flanges because we don't want to break the hub. That would really suck. So now that we've got a more sturdy base to hammer on than our legs, let's get this bearing out. I don't know how well you can see inside there, but it is not moving at all. When one hammer doesn't work, we'll try another. My goodness, this is crazy. There is obviously a reason that Profile recommends that you use a press to do this. All right, let's try it this way. If we can see in here a little bit, maybe get it to focus. The bearing is coming out just very slowly. And now that we've gone down through two rubber mallets, we're gonna try to put the nut on the axle here. And if you're using 3 8 you'd be screwing the bolt into the axle rather than hammering on where the bolt screws in itself. Make sure it's screwed on and flush so that we can't hurt anything. We're gonna use a real hammer this time. Oh, now I know that it doesn't tell you to hit the axle with a real hammer, but desperate times call for desperate measures. As long as we make sure that the threads don't get messed up, I think we're okay. Yeah, that hurt, but that was worth it. Oh my goodness. A five-year-old bearing coming out of the hub. Finally. If there's anything to be learned from this, you should probably use a press. And if you can't, and you absolutely cannot, you need to make sure that if you're gonna hit it with a real hammer, that you're not going to damage your axle or your hub. You get the blocks of wood, just put the safety measures in place so that you're not going to ruin your hub or your axle by doing it this way. So let's get back to the other camera and keep going. Okay, so now that you got both of the bearings out of the hub, you're ready for your replacement bearings. And these bearings are 17 millimeters by 30 millimeters by seven millimeters. I've got some new ones right here. You can see once we get them out of the packaging that if we get it in the right light with the camera, we'll see that it says 17 by 30 by 7. You can get these from Profile or you can get them somewhere else. My suggestion is to get them from Profile or get them from your local bike shop just because that's the way you should do things. But the first step to getting these back into your hub is actually cleaning out the inside of your hub. Both surfaces, you want to inspect them, look for cracks, look for anything that could be messed up. And from there, we're going to put in the non-drive side bearing first. And in order to put the non-drive side bearing back into your hub, the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your axle again, get your non-drive side. You're going to slide the bearing onto the axle. You're going to slide the cone spacer onto the axle. And then you're going to put your jam nut back onto the axle. Once your jam nut's on, we can take a little bit of grease put it around the bearing itself. We can get our non-drive side, side of the hub facing up, and we're going to put it in just like the axle goes. Take our mallet and gently hammer it back in because this is the side that goes in pretty easily. So it's pretty simple, and then we can take a rag and we can wipe off the excess grease and now we're ready for the other side, which is the pain in the butt side. But what we do to put this bearing in is we get our other side bearing. We get our driver because we're actually going to be using the driver to put the bearing back in. We're going to use the driver as a press to put the bearing back into the hub. So in order to do that, the best way to do this is to take out the paws and the springs. And when you do this, you wanna make sure that you keep track of them. 
I'm just going to take out the paws because the springs usually keep themselves in pretty well. So we're just going to take out the paws and set them aside just like that. Now we're going to want to put a little bit of grease on this bearing. Not a ton because there should be no grease inside where your driver paws and springs are all working. So from there we're going to slide the bearing onto the axle. Then we're going to slide our driver onto the axle. Then we're going to take our axle nut. We're not going to use the jam nut because the jam nut has very thin threads on it that could easily get messed up and we don't want to mess up such a specialized piece of hardware when we could if something goes wrong mess up an axle nut because axle nuts are easy to get cheap so we're going to thread the axle nut onto the axle okay so in order to keep the axle in place and keep things solid while we're tightening down on the axle nut to tighten the driver and push the bearing into the hub we're going to employ a trick that i did in a previous video in order to do this so what we're going to do is put the axle into the frame and tighten down an axle nut against the frame so that effectively we're putting the wheel on the bike like we normally would but with it sticking out so that we can tighten the axle nut down on the other side and push our bearing in. When you do this you're going to want to make sure that you get it pretty tight so that nothing can move. Okay so now that we've got the wheel locked in place so the axle and the wheel cannot move we're ready to start tightening our driver against the bearing to push it into the hub. But first, before we do that, we want to take off the driver and make sure that the bearing is where it's going to need to be so that we're not just tightening the driver against the bearing, which is tightening against the inside of the hub. So that it's actually going to go into the place that's designated for it. So I've got it seated a little bit in there. I'm going to put the driver back on. Okay, so a note to my future self. If you use a washer, you got to pay attention to where your driver's at because at a certain point, you're going to reach this uh, smooth part of your axle and the washer is not going to be able to go any further. So either you need to use a washer with a hole bigger than this size of the axle or you need to figure something else out. And my something else is an old jam nut that I hollowed out that's actually a washer. See, look, it just goes onto here. And this is basically designed to go on right here. So I realized that not everybody is going to have one of these jam nuts that's hollowed out. So what you can do is you can take your old bearing and you can put it against the driver and then tighten against that because your bearing is bigger than that smooth part of the axle so it won't get stuck on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my jam nut washer against the driver. I'm gonna put the bearing on here anyways just to take up space and because it's a junk bearing. And we're going to finish tightening our bearing into the hub. And you're going to feel a definite stop point from there, right there's the stop point. Don't tighten it anymore. You don't want to unnecessarily tighten it and mess anything up that way. So. Basically from there, you're done putting the new bearings into your hub and you're ready for reassembly. So I'm gonna get all of this apart and then we'll finish up the video. Okay, so just in case you've never taken out your paws and springs before, we're gonna show how to put them back in. I have a spring out right now. We're going to see that pretty much you just place it into the groove where it goes and it sits in there very simply. It's important that you make sure that you know which way your paws and springs are supposed to face. If you didn't take your springs out the way that I didn't, it's obvious, but if everything fell out or you took them all out without thinking about it, one trick that you can remember is that right side drive hubs like what I have here, the paws go in and face slash close counterclockwise. The points on the paws point counterclockwise and for left side drive it'll be the exact opposite so if you're looking at the driver the way that you're seeing it right now on camera the paws will be in the right slot the springs will be in the left slot 
and that is for right side drive. If you have left side drive, it'll be the exact opposite in that the paws will close and point clockwise and the paws will be on the left side and the springs will be on the right side. So let's put the rest of the paws into the driver here. It's usually pretty easy to do. Sorry, I got a little bit of it off camera and I'm gonna block these last two because it's hard to put them in the way that I'm holding it. And the last thing that you need to pay attention to is this shim spacer, whatever you wanna call it, this needs to go in between your driver and your hub bearing. And the way that it goes in there is that there's a little groove in one side of it that little groove should face the bearing inside of your hub so it should sit against your driver with the groove facing up out however you're holding it the groove should not be facing your driver and from there we can grab the rim here and we can put the driver onto the axle and to install the driver, you just spin it the way that it makes your hub click, which for me is counterclockwise or the way that the paws were pointing. Left side drive, it'll be the exact opposite. And now you're ready to put your jam nut back onto your axle. One other side note that I want to point out is that you shouldn't tighten your jam nut too tight against your driver because if you do that, when you go to put everything back together on the bike and you tighten your axle nut up against everything, your wheel's not going to spin or it's not going to spin as good as it could. And you're just going to have to take everything off and loosen the jam nut and tinker with things until they work properly. So just don't tighten the jam nut too tight. Tighten it just against the driver and enough to where the driver's not moving whenever you try to wiggle it back and forth and you should be good. And from here, you're ready to put your hub guards, axle nuts, whatever you've got, put them back onto your axle and put it back onto your bike. So hopefully you found this useful. Three eighths axles are going to be not that much different. All of the steps should be about the same as far as how you get the axle and the bearings out. Once again, I'm gonna say, if you have to replace the driver's side bearing you probably should take it somewhere to do it because you saw how difficult it was for me and I've been working on my bike for years. This is not something that just anybody should do because it could really mess up your hub to the point where you completely have to buy a new one and that's not something anybody wants. So hopefully you found this video useful. If so, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching even if you didn't find it useful and we'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.